Let's see if we can get all five dragons. I like you thinking. At the heart of their company is a philanthropic ethos that puts compassion before cash. I don't think we could really believe in a business that just puts profit as its focus. But will their altruistic approach rouse or repel the profit-hungry investors? The idea of walking in to see the dragons is definitely scary, but I think if you keep thinking about why it is that we're doing it, this, the nerves sort of pitter away a little bit. Hopefully we'll get the investment that we need. Yeah. Hi, dragons. My name's Johnny. And I'm Antonia. And we are the co-founders of a skincare brand called Nursum. Uh, we're here today to pitch for £75,000 in return for 1.5% equity. The idea behind Nursum happened a number of years ago when I was working as a busy paediatric nurse. On average, I'd be washing my hands around 50 to 60 times a day. It was during this time that my hands became cracked dry and at times bled and actually led to me taking two weeks off work in order for them to recover. Whilst Antonio was off work, we discovered there was a real lack in the marketplace for a natural yet effective product targeted towards people with hard-working hands. So working with some expert cosmetic laboratories, this is the range that we've developed and is available today. Nursum is available in Boots, Lloyd's Pharmacies and many other prominent UK retailers. But not wanting to lose sight of the reason that we set up Nursum in the first place, we created what's called the Nursum Promise. And for every product we sell at retail, we then provide a month's worth of free hand care back to a nurse, midwife or other healthcare professional in the NHS. And it would be an absolute honour for a dragon or dragons to join us on this journey. A benevolent pitch from Johnny and Antonia Philp, who've put the needs of NHS workers at the core of their concept. This hand wash was designed using really gentle, ultra-mild cleansers. They're asking for £75,000 in exchange for 1.5% of their skincare range. Good for the face? You can use it well, on your face if you want. I need it, of course. You must use baby cream already. You have a face like that, too. <laughs> Deborah Meaden is first to question the hand cream hopeful. So, it sounds like already a success story. And this was all pre-COVID that you set this up. Yes. It was, it was, yeah. But COVID has definitely accelerated the business enormously. OK, um, I'm going to home straight in on your valuation. 75,000 for 1.5% of the business sounds quite racy. So I'm hoping you're going to be able to give me some pretty good numbers to back that up. So last year's uh, turnover for 2019 was 142,000 uh, with a loss of 18,000. Year to date, so far, we've turned over 800,000 with a net of 200,000. And our full year forecast for the whole of 2020 is 1.5 million with a net of 312. Do you know, I'm very pleased to hear that. Too often I sit here and people come up with crazy valuations and then they tell you that all this stuff is going to happen in the future. Yeah. yeah. But that's the future. But right here, you've got a very clear demonstration of, of pretty stratospheric growth. Yeah. Spectacular sales have helped support the company's £5 million valuation, usually a red rag to a dragon. But Tuka Suleiman has concerns about the long-term prospects of the business. To me, call it what you want, at the end of the day, it's a hand cream. You've got that little bit of what I call COVID magic going in your, in your favour. But without the COVID, where would this business balance out at? I don't think the way that people view hand washing will change anytime soon. Not, not just the UK, but internationally as well. I think Nursum's a perfectly positioned brand to be able to help as many people as possible who are in need of our products. You're good. <laughs> Thank you too. Your numbers are good, your presentation, you've got all the answers to all the questions. Bang, 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 bang. It's very rare. Yeah. <laughs> so what exactly are you guys looking for? Apart from the money, of course. The first point is we've never built a business of this size, ultimately trying to build it sort of 40, 50 million value. We really need someone who's done that before. And then the second thing is international. And I think that's something that, that you guys can help with. Guys, can I ask what your plans are for the future? What's your end game? I think, um, well, first and foremost, I think I'll always want to be a nurse. That's 
in me, it's a vocation. Um, a big thing is that population that we're serving, and that's mostly healthcare professionals, they give so much to so many people. The late shifts that you put in, the times when you probably don't rush back to your family and stay with your patient. We just want to be able to continue to give a bit of a pat on the back and a bit of, well done, like, you're amazing. I love that answer because it, it's a business with heart. <laughs> you know, it, yeah. it means something to you. I love that. Johnny and Antonia's acumen and ethos is proving to be a potent formula in the den. But has their charitable charm won over Peter Jones? You have got it easy at the moment on valuation. You have achieved a miracle starting a business and getting it to its point. And now you could be in a position where you go, oh, if I continue on this growth phase, I'm going to have a business that's going to be worth 20 million, 30 million, 40 million. The journey to get from what I would class as where you are at point two of a 10-step journey, if you haven't got the experience of doing it, it should be terrifying you right now. Yeah. That's the bit that I really am concerned about. Then I go back to valuation. I think your value at the moment, um, from my perspective, is, is, is really sharp. So the only way I can change a valuation is by giving you an offer. So I'm going to do that. OK. <laughs> I'm going to offer you all of the money, but I want 10% of the company. OK. OK, thank you, Peter. An offer from Peter Jones, whose concerns over the company's valuation have compelled him to ask for a much bigger slice of the business than the 1.5% originally presented. There's a lot of love in the room at the moment, but will those positive vibes become cash offers? We're all interested. I can sense it, because it's all gone quiet. So I think each one of us, as dragons, are now going to parade ourselves and tell you what we can each do for you. I'm coming with a whole package. I have got 54 distributors around the world, probably in every corner of the planet you could imagine. We can open any door in the UK, Tesco, as the in boots, we're everywhere. So are they. Sorry? So yeah. are they. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. What you're saying is you're able to open a door for them, they've already no, opened. No, I'm, I'm just saying it's the distribution part which could catapult your business. So what I'm offering is £100,000 for 10%. OK, thanks. Thanks, Tuka. Thank you. Tuka Suleiman asks for the same 10% share of equity as Peter Jones, but by upping the cash offer to £100,000, it's a more attractive valuation of the business. Does Sarah Davies have anything up her sleeve that can pique the entrepreneur's interest? Honestly, I think your biggest potential here is the US market. Mm -hmm. And that's a journey that I've been on personally, and I think that's something that I could really help and support with. And honestly, I think that's where you need the help and support more than here in the UK, because you seem to have everything sorted out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I would like to make you an offer. And I would like to offer all of the money for 8% of the business. OK, okay thank thanks, you. Sarah. Her US connections combined with a smaller 8% equity demand put Sarah Davies firmly in the fight to form an alliance with the skincare business. Only Deborah Meaden and healthcare heavyweight Tej Lalvani have yet to show their hands. Will they make it a clean sweep of offers? I love it, and I don't know what there is to not love about you. And I love you and this enough to make you a very racy offer. So I'm going to offer you all of the money, but I want 5% of the business. OK. OK, thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Antonia and Johnny. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Well. well, look, I'm really excited about this, especially you two, and especially what you're standing for in terms of creating a product with a real health benefit. 
And I think the way you've aligned yourself in terms of the, the NHS and the nurses providing that, you know, there's a lot of synergies in terms of what I'm doing with brands that I have. And I think I can really make this explode. So I'm gonna make you a very compelling offer as well. I'm gonna offer you all of the money for 5%. Okay, thanks, Thank Tej. Deborah Meaden and Tej Lalvani swoop in with matching undercutting bids of 5%, making up a full house of offers. But have Johnny and Antonia already made up their minds about who they'd like as their partner in Cream? Can I just go back to you, Peter? It was all of the money for 10%. Yeah. Would you consider matching Deborah and Tasia's offer? If I did, would we have a dividend policy that would allow me to get my money back? That was one of the things that I'd like to come on to actually next. Yeah. Would you be willing to come back down to 3% once you've had your initial investment paid back? He's got a lot. He's got to come from 10% to 5% to have to back to <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, we're asking You're for good. a lot. We're asking for a lot here. I'd say yes. OK. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Can we, can we... You haven't asked us if we're, we're... I'm assuming you're not interested in us. Well, if you guys are happy to match what's on the table and... I well, I, I mean, I, I feel a little bit left out that I haven't been asked. Would oh. I match? No, sorry, sorry, you took it. <laughs> no, I, look, I think, um, yeah, I'll match. OK, thank, thank you. Thank you. I'd be uh, happy to go with that. Yeah, look, I mean, it is important to choose who you think is going to be the right partner long term. And uh, I'd like to work with you guys. So, um, you know, I'd be happy to do that. OK, thank, thank you. Thank you. I think this stopped being just a business conversation about 10 minutes ago, didn't it? It started <laughs> being about what's the right thing to do and how can any one of us support you on the journey that you're on that we clearly all believe in. So you've got five equal offers and you go and choose the dragon that's right for you. OK. Thank you, sir. Oh. You need to go and talk to the wall. We do need to talk to the wall. <laughs> it might be a while. <laughs> <clears throat> The entrepreneurs clean up as the equity demands tumble down. 75,000 at 5%, what does that work out at? With all five dragons now deadlocked at 5%, going down to 3% once they get their money back. I just think, especially if we're like international distribution. Yes, yeah, I think you're right. Having the creme de la creme of investors vie for your business may be an enviable position, but it poses a dilemma. OK, that's just... Whew. Sorry. Just checking my maths there. GCSE <laughs> maths wasn't the best. <laughs> OK, um, so before we even say this, we just want to thank you all, cos I know, like, we all owe you, like, a massive amount of respect. But, um... We've decided to accept your offer. Yes! What? Great stuff, guys. High five in the air. <laughs> High five. <laughs> Tej Lalvani is the cat that got the cream as he partners up with Johnny and Antonia, who secure the £70,000 they were asking for, having negotiated one of the most impressive equity climb downs in Dragon's Den history. Blimey, that's really hard. He was quite well, clever there. What was the point in asking me to go down? That was a hustle, wasn't it? <laughs> Seeing the likes of Peter and Deborah, your natural inclination is to want to take their offers because they're the ones that you know the best. And we did our homework before we went in and we knew all about Tasia's business. And I think he's precisely the kind of person to help move us forward for the next few years. Okay, you got this. And we worked together a year and a half ago. First time I met her, I said, we need, to, we need to remain friends. We're going to work together again when we start a company one day. <sighs> and I was like, oh, that's an odd statement. And then, you know. <laughs> Here we are, co-founders. Matt and Melody think they've come up with a concept that could revolutionise the way we donate to charity. We're innovating giving and we're bridging the gap between young people and charities. People do want to do good. It's just it needs to be easy. Hi, Dragons. 
My name's Matt. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Toucan. And I'm Melody, head of product and also co-founder of Toucan. And today, we're asking for £85,000 in return for a 3% stake in our business. The year 2017 was the first time that millennials became the largest giving group in the UK. But there's a problem. In a world that's going through digitalization and moving online, this sector is still catching up. How can we expect to engage this modern generation without a modern solution? Toucan is an app that makes giving proactive, flexible and fun. Toucan allows users to create a flexible giving portfolio, which is one donation split across multiple charities and you can change your portfolio whenever you like. You can restart, alter or pause your giving to suit you. An app aimed at charity-minded millennials is the offering from business partners Matt Crate and Melody Tron. As you can see, there's three charities in my portfolio, so I'm now going to set up my monthly donation, £15 a month in total, split three ways. They're seeking £85,000 in exchange for just 3% of their company. And lastly, sharing. You can share charities, the causes, and you can encourage others to follow your lead. And that's Toucan. The duo's platform may have giving at its core, but Deborah Meaden is wondering about the D word that's the holy grail of the tech world. Matt, Melody, hi. Can you tell me who owns the data? If I'm fundraising as a charity, somebody comes onto my site and makes a donation, I've got that data. And that is the lifeblood of my charity. So who owns the data in this instance? We own the donor data. We do not pass that on to the charity. And that's one of the selling points to users to our application. When we dug deep systematically into the problems, one of the things that people worried about was being constantly pressured for donations. And effectively, we do act as a firewall. I completely get that, but charities spend millions of pounds trying to make sure that they can communicate with them, they can update them, they can build relationships with yeah. them. And what you're doing is de-relationshipping. How many charities have you got signed up at the moment? We've got 20,000 charities automatically enrolled with Toucan. Oh, we right, do... so as a charity, whether I like it or not, you can put me up on your site. Yeah. Blimey, I'm not sure how I feel about that. The way that we're structuring the business is that, you know, we're effectively a marketplace, you know, joining donor with charity. We then send an email to that charity stating, there's a donation coming for you, there's no fees for it. If you don't want to receive it, please let us know and you're, and you're free to come off the platform if you'd like as well. Matt stands his ground against some Deborah Mead and scepticism about the way his outfit operates. Now, Stephen Bartlett wants to know how the duo are converting charitable millennials to their platform. Can you tell me one of the ways that you're acquiring users? So there's influencers, corporate partnerships, users and charities. So I'll give you an example of an influencer, OK? You know, your world. Say, for example, you, the influencer, have a charity that you want to support. We give you the ability to promote online. And if I'm a user and I click on what you've posted, and when I download Toucan, within my portfolio is your charity. So it gives you, the influencer, the ability to use your power for good. So all of my followers have the chance to join a community of givers on a recurring monthly basis? 100%. Creators and influencers want to be charitable, but starting a charity and running a charity is tremendously difficult. Yeah. So Zoella, Alfie Days, Joe Wicks, what you've got here is you have the chance to give them the tech infrastructure to run their own digital charity. That's exactly it. Yeah, pretty good. The app's ability to increase fundraising by syncing with influencers and their followers seems to have hit the spot with a social media savvy Stephen Bartlett. But Tuka Suleiman is more interested in how the company makes money for itself than how it raises cash for others. Look, um, this is a business. Yes. This is not a charity. Yeah. Right? Let's get down to business. If I put in £10, yep. how are you going to make money? 100% of your donation goes to the charity and our revenue is on top of the donation. We charge a fixed fee of 50 pence. We ask you, the user, to contribute four, six or 8% of your donation on top of that. So £10.90 would leave your account if you chose 4% of the contribution. So the higher my donation, the higher 
your fee? The fixed fee remains, and yes. OK, look, I'm going to break cover here. You know, I'm one of these rebel dragons, always thinks out the box. <laughs> so what this really needs to super boost this is five dragons. Therefore, I'm very willing to offer you one-fifth of the money for 5%, if all the other dragons come along. So you would give up 25%. Thank, thanks for the offer. Thank you, Tuka. Tuka Suleiman becomes the first to make a play for Matt and Melody's business. But unusually, his offer is reliant on the other four investors to his left joining him in a five-way dragon deal. As the founder of his own charitable foundation, Peter Jones is no stranger to giving to good causes. But is he ready to put his hands in his pockets for the duo's offering? I think it's really clever what you've done, because you are thinking about how to now engage people like me, the charity, yeah. with a user group that would never have come to my foundation in the first place. Yeah. So this is now a huge revenue stream that I would never have had without your existence. Yeah, he's exactly right. Yeah. So I'm going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all of the money, 85,000, for 10%. However, the most important thing is you need awareness. So I'm very, very happy to share that at 2% with my fellow dragons because I wouldn't say one, because Tuka won't get out of bed for it. So that would have been 17,000 at 2%. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. And I believe what we can bring to the party is advocacy and awareness. So if that offer fits within your structure, then I am more than willing to join the cause on that basis. Thank you so much. So, guys, you do need a rounded approach to this. So I'm also very happy to share in a bigger offer that takes on board all of the dragons at 2%. You guys, you're a pretty impeccable team. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. So I am going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all of the money for 10%. But I'm also willing to split that five ways amongst my fellow dragons. So you've just got potentially five dragons to invest. How many people have done that? Thank you so much. Do you want to go to the wall yeah, and have yeah, a chat? We go to the wall. Thank you. A rare turn of events as all five dragons offer to team up on a deal for Matt and Melody's charitable act. This is insane. It's <laughs> all five dragons. But they're asking for a combined 10% equity in exchange for the £85,000, more than three times the 3% that's on offer. This is like probably better than we expected. <laughs> Peter Jones and Stephen Bartlett are also open to a solo investment for the same equity ask. But it seems Matt and Melody are hoping all the dragons will be a bit more charitable. Okay, thank you so much for all your offers. It means everything to us. Our five-year plan stipulates a million donors in five years. Can we arrange an agreement whereby we accept a level of percentage if you get us to that million donors within, say, two years. If you don't, you come down to what we asked for. Um, I, I'm going to say 100% no. And i tell you why. If we help you to get to the million, I want double, genuinely. I think you're working at this the wrong way. I think it's a very, very, very good offer. The barrier in my mind is I need to go away with both sides feeling like they've won. Five dragons, that's what you want. Very rare, five dragons. Have you got a counter offer other than the illogical one you came back with? I, I did not want to leave here today giving away more than 5% in the business. Is there anything that will you guys come in on your, on your percentage? I really don't want to walk away from this deal. I really want a dragon. It's not looking good dragons. for you, Matt. Mm. There's not much we can come down. We're in 2% each. 
Yeah, um, I'm gonna put my neck on the line. Stephen, when I found out you were coming on the den, we had to get in front of you because I thought this would resonate. We want you in the business. We came here for you. Can we agree something where you come down? Can we meet at 5%? I don't think that's meeting. I started at 10. I think we're going to start to make it a bit easier for you, Matt and Melody. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out too. And I'm out too. OK. I can't give 10% of the business. Can we agree something where you come down? 7%. What you actually need is me, like, in your office, in there with the team. You want me in front of your investors? I'm not going to do it for, like, 3%. To be completely honest, there's people offering me 3% just to be on their boards, right? So for 7%, I think that's fair. And I think the value that I can add is proportionate. Done. Amazing. Thanks so much. Matt and Melody have done it. You should be so proud of yourself. The charity app entrepreneurs leave the den with the 85,000 pounds they were seeking. <laughs> and a master of millennial marketing on board with the potential to catapult their fundraising platform into the corporate stratosphere. I think it's safe to say we're feeling pretty good. Yeah, that was, <laughs> like, so unexpected. I, I, I can't even speak properly. Well done. Thank you, appreciate That's it, thank you. Next into the den is 26-year-old Lara Sengupta. Don't worry, it'll be fine. We'll just go with the flow. Yeah. She believes there's one dragon in particular who'd be right to back her business. The dragon I would like today would be Deborah. I know that she works a lot with charities and this is something that I'm doing through the company. That's very close to my heart. Hello, I'm Lara Singipta and I'm the founder of Cork Yogis, a company that has created luxury cork yoga mats with a social purpose. I'm here today to ask for a investment of 50,000 for an equity share of 15%. Yoga is a huge and growing market with a UK spend of 800 million last year alone. Yet the yoga mats available are fundamentally flawed. They become slippery as soon as you start to sweat. Um, they're unnatural and they're unhygienic due to the fibres absorbing sweat and bacteria. So our cork yoga mats provide grip that actually increases as you sweat, a natural surface for practice, and what's more, cork is naturally antibacterial. Um, yes. We really wanted to connect our unique products back to where yoga came from. So I developed a social business model that with every purchase, we support education and employment for human trafficking survivors in India. I've been trading for about 11 months now and we've sold 400 yoga mats and 250 yoga mat bags. Um, um, Year one after investment, um, we intend to secure 0.6% of the niche luxury yoga mat market. This will give us a revenue of 500,000. And by year three, 3% of this luxury market. With your investment today, um, this will really allow us to kickstart our marketing and PR. Okay, so we have some products up here if you wanted to get, come up and give it a go.
a pitch with poise. Have you got anything a bit harder than anything you just did? Because <laughs> I, I do that most mornings. <laughs> and social purpose from entrepreneur Lara Sengupta. She's seeking £50,000. And breathe. Is he breathing? Look, I'm not sure that's yoga. <laughs> in exchange for a 15% stake in her company, making yoga mats with an ethical edge. You're going a bit pink, Tuka. Um, can you get up? Can I get up? Of course. <laughs> hey. 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 <laughs> Downward dogs done. Ex-banker Jenny Campbell wants to know if Lara's idea adds up. I'm interested in this dynamic of um, social enterprise and giving back to the Indian yep. uh, causes you mentioned. Where does that come from? My dad's Indian, so I've always been growing up visiting India. And I've seen a lot of um, problems out there that I've always wanted to sort of, you know, help out or do something. What's more important to you, building a global business mm. or giving to social causes? I feel like the two can go hand in hand very well. We have developed a business model where we can give away um, six pounds for every yoga mat we sell. Let's talk about that then. I can tell you the figures for year one. Okay. How much would you be contributing to the Indian courses? So revenue is 500,000. We would sell 3,000 yoga bags retail mm -hmm. and 6,000 yoga bags wholesale. So 9,000 times six is what we would be giving back. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that is. It's 54,000. Yeah, so that's how much we would be giving back to education courses. That's very generous. A fledgling company committing to a substantial cash giveaway surprises Jenny Campbell. Does brand supremo Tej Lalvani see a synergy with the ethically driven entrepreneur? Hi, I'm Tej. Um, I'm Indian as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I have uh, contacts in the yoga industry. In fact, a family member of mine mm -hmm. pretty much created the yoga industry in the UK. Mm -hmm. What you're doing, the causes are great, but the key is to get the product successful. Okay. Getting sales, building it, and then you can give more by doing that. Yeah, of course, yeah. And it must have been tough. I mean, 400 units mm. sold only in 11 months. How much is it costing uh, price-wise? £12. It's costing you £12 and you're making it where? Um, in China. The product's nice. Uh, what is specifically the size of the yoga mat market in the UK only? Um, so we've calculated the size of the luxury yoga mat market which is 10% of the whole market, so 80 million last year. But there's no other companies doing a, like a social business model like ours. Lara, the sentiment of what you're doing is fantastic, mm -hmm. but the bit that surprised me a little bit there mm -hmm. was that you're having the product made in China. Yeah. We do acknowledge that getting stuff made in China doesn't 100% fit with our business model and we've already in talks with um, a company in Portugal and we're gonna switch all of our manufacturers over to them. Okay well that's helpful because actually that's told me something else that has told me that you have got a focus on the business side of things. You've been as ethical as you possibly can at the moment but you're yeah. looking you're looking to do that. Yeah. Okay. An endorsement for Lara's ethics and her entrepreneurial skills from the dragon she most wanted to impress. But now Peter Jones wants more clarity on the cork yogi's concept. It is just a yoga mat. On the top it's a bit of cork mm -hmm. and it's a mat underneath. Mm -hmm. What is the business? Okay, so um, so far we are just specialising in yoga mats and bags. So how much, how much would one of these bags be? The bags are 25, the mats are 65. But why would I pay 25 pounds for that bag? Um, we, we found that our customers really like the bags and the fact that the bags have been handmade by um, survivors of human trafficking is sort of like a big, um, a I, big sway. I, I feel that you're, you're confused. I think you're confused about whether this is a business or whether this is a social enterprise. 
I know that this, this is a business. We are very business focused and in um, one to three years we're going to focus on yoga mats but after that yoga apparel is absolutely huge. Cork yogis, what's it yes. going to have cork clothing? No, but we're going to develop a brand first. Really? A sceptical Peter Jones struggles to make sense of Lara's business strategy. And now her expansion plans are troubling retail fashion impresario Tuka Suleiman. I was a bit surprised when you started talking about cork yogi yoga clothes and I thought to myself we're just thinking of like a wider market so you know that we are thinking about the future well yeah but you but with 50,000 pounds I'm not going to get you very far 50,000 pounds will get us to year one and we're looking for a relationship that can really help us sort of get further but Lara yeah the clothing market which I know very well mm -hmm. is already overcrowded yeah by the time you get round to it, mm -hmm. it'll be even more overcrowded. Yeah. You know? And, and the fact is that if you say, I am going to be a premium mm -hmm. yoga mat retailer, I'd say, great, you're mm -hmm. focusing. We are focused, but there's so much more we can do. We can make canvas bags, we can make backpacks with like little slip on things to put your yoga mat through. There's so much more we can do. Okay, look, the bag. Mm -hmm. The quality, the quick glance is very good. Thank you. But I'm just looking at it and saying, mm -hmm. is it a business that I get my money back? Or is it a business that I'm going to invest for charity? OK. Yeah, so that, that's what's confusing me at the moment. Whilst Tuka Suleiman searches for investment enlightenment, Peter Jones needs no more illumination. I'm not overly impressed, actually. I don't think it's that difficult to go and source and find a mat. And you're asking for a business that you're valuing at several hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and it's just a rubberized court mat, and you've solved 400. Yeah, OK. That's just not good enough. <laughs> Your attention has been very much been on the social aspect. So I would really focus in on that business because the money that you derive from focusing on the business you can make people's lives better by donating it or doing whatever you want but this is far too early to invest in at the moment so that's why i'm going to say i'm out okay rejection for lara's matt and her business model from a critical peter jones is the dragon with yoga connections more aligned with the entrepreneur? I disagree with Peter. I think the social aspect is good. You have a good, unique selling point in terms of the, the, the natural aspect of it. What is it and, that you disagree with me well, with? Well, uh, the social aspect I think is a good thing and I think Products are built on that as well. No, I agree, but what's yeah. the disagreement with me? You're not keen on the social aspect. You don't think it's a, it's a big selling point. I didn't say that. I said get the business fixed. The social aspect, you can donate whatever you want. I like that. I like the fact but, you can donate money. But also you thought it wasn't a good business in terms of the potential about it. You think it's all right. And I think it's a good business. I mean, okay, thank you. Peter thinks it's all right, but I think it's good. Thank you. Um, I'm going to give you an offer. But it is going to take some time and guidance. So I would like to get another dragon on board. So I'm prepared to offer you half the money for 20% of the company to do the deal. OK, thank you for your offer. Tej Lalvani takes the den by surprise with his bid for the business. But with only half the cash on the table, another dragon must match his offer. Will it be a previously torn Tuka Suleiman? I don't know the yoga market. Okay. I don't do yoga. I don't see myself going into the yoga business, unfortunately. I'm not going to be the one to give it the other half. So for that reason, I'm out. 
OK, thank you. Lara, philanthropy is wonderful, but you do need to build a business first mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's got the, the strength and stature to be able to sustain that. You need to become a businesswoman first and foremost. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's too small. Yeah. Um, wish you every success and I'm out. Thank you. Jenny Campbell walks away, concerned about the scale of the opportunity leaving only Deborah Meaden remaining. Will Lara's preferred dragon, with a string of existing ethical investments, be the one to team up with Tej Lalvani and complete the deal she so desperately needs? I actually think you've got an awful lot right. Thank you. I, I love that you're starting out with good intentions because it's OK to make money. It's mm -hmm. good to make money. Yeah. It's what you do with that. And you've, you're already paying attention yeah. to what you do with that. I laud you for that. Thank you. I could work with you and the, and the way you work every day of the week. Can you feel a butt? Oh, OK. <laughs> The but is, I promise you, you will not own 3% of the market in three years. I don't think the business is going to be as big as you think it is. OK. I hope I'm wrong, but I'm out. Good karma, but no capital from Deborah Meaden. Now, Lara's investment hopes lie firmly in the hands of Tej Lalvani. Will he up his offer or make an exit? I think the market is there. Yeah. I think it's going to take time to grow it. Mm -hmm. But I think as a single investor, it'll take a lot more of my time to do that. OK. Unfortunately, I won't be able to offer you the full money. OK. But um, I wish you all the best and continue doing what you're doing, and I'm sure you'll do very well. But I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. Without another dragon on board, Tej Lalvani is unwilling to do a deal, and Lara exits the den empty-handed. It did feel like it was quite close. I got an offer of half the money. To have one person in there saying, yes, I believe in your business, that was really important for me.